and I am one of the Student Fellows at the Civil War Institute at Gettysburg College. Today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about 19th century battlefield paintings, specifically those of Gettysburg. Now, for the Civil War, painters really had to pick key moments of what they believed represented each battle or of the Civil War itself, and so the three artists I would like to talk to you a little bit about today each chose to depict Pickett's charge. Now the first of these paintings is entitled The Battle of Gettysburg, Pickett's Charge by Peter Rothermel. And this painting was actually commissioned in 1866 by the governor of Pennsylvania. And it would take four years to complete. And most of this time was not actually spent painting. You see, Rothermel wanted this painting to be as accurate as he could make it, and so he had to identify battle lines and who was where and when, and from the information he had, he could not figure out what the battle lines were. And so he actually started establishing correspondence with Union and Confederate generals that were at the battle and compared the information to try to find out and be as accurate as possible in painting those battle lines. Now, after those four years, the painting was eventually displayed and it went on a short tour in several northern cities. And it's important to note that this is not a small painting. I mean, it's 36 by 89 centimeters, which is very large. Um, and so it was very hard to transport and so it was a very big deal that it went on this short tour um, and people knew this and so they actually would come to the gallery specifically to see this painting and it was overwhelmingly a positive reaction and people really loved this painting when it went on this tour so much so that the Pennsylvania Capitol building actually still displays it and you can see it in Harrisburg to this day. Now the second of these paintings is entitled The Repulse of Longstreet's Assault by James Walker and this painting was actually commissioned by John Batchelder in 1870 and it shows an 180 degree view of Pickett's charge in what he considered the pivotal moment. Now, one interesting thing about this particular painting is the fact that dark colors were used to make it hard to identify the different regiments that are depicted in this painting. And while historians aren't quite sure of the artistic intention, um, it could be to portray simply the chaos of battle or to not focus on the different sides, but to look at the battle as a whole and try to see the bigger picture. And this focus of not on one side or the other is actually something we see quite commonly in these 19th century paintings, um, especially by artists who are painting like quite close after the war because they have this reconciliatory mindset and they're trying to get the Confederate perspective and the Union perspective at the same time. It's also important to note that you will never see any blood or gore in these 19th century paintings, mostly because they were meant for public display and had to be deemed appropriate, and for 19th century audiences, the inclusion of blood or unnecessary gore would be inappropriate for these public displays. And the third and final painting I will be discussing today is one that most visitors of Gettysburg are already familiar with, and this is Paul Philippoteau's Gettysburg Cyclorama. Now, Philippoteau was a French artist who was commissioned by the National Panorama Company to create a cyclorama painting of the Battle of Gettysburg, and so Philippoteau came to Gettysburg, he created sketches, and he had uh, his colleagues and co-workers take photographs of the battlefield, and he combined those images with battle maps and personal accounts from veterans um, to create his final sketch, which eventually became the Cyclorama painting. 
Um, and when Filippito returned to his studio, he and his team of assistants began sketching and painting, and the process took about a year and a half to complete, with the final painting ending up at 377 feet in circumference and 42 feet high. Now, the cyclorama painting was remade three times to be displayed in Philadelphia, Boston, Chicago, and there was even one that made its rounds in Europe. And as many visitors of Gettysburg know, the Boston cyclorama has actually st been restored and is now available for viewing at the Gettysburg Visitor Center. I hope you enjoyed this brief talk about 19th century battlefield paintings of Gettysburg, specifically focusing on Pickett's Charge. Until next time.